DLL is at, at a lot of uh, intelligence and uh, assets to uh, provide a, a good uh, assessment of what happened. And if uh, they say that uh, it is likely that it is an uh, anti-air defense missile from Ukraine, we can trust them. So, uh, so yeah, uh, for, my, for, for me, it's, it's very clear. Indeed. And you agree with what Stoltenberg is saying, what the Polish government has been saying. This was probably accidental fire from Ukraine. So in terms of a response now from NATO, I mean, what do you think, if anything, should happen in the days ahead? Well, NATO is prepared and has been prepared for a long time and certainly uh, since the beginning of this war in Ukraine. So there is not much to do in terms of reinforcing but they will uh, perhaps reassess their uh, measures and to see if everything is really in place to, to provide the best information in the best time for the deciders of NATO, which has been the case, obviously, in, in, in this case. And uh, uh, the, the other point is that perhaps there will be an idea about how to try at least to coordinate a little bit with the Russian to, to try to avoid any misunderstanding, any quid pro quo. Uh, one should remember that uh, we, ha we had these uh, agreements during the Cold War to avoid any mishaps and the escalation due to uh, unfortunate incidents. So uh, uh, this is the, the lesson to learn uh, out of that. Uh, I would add as well that uh, Mr. Zelensky was a little bit uh, too forceful yesterday, but uh, we must understand that because he was under pressure with this uh, raid of uh, the Russian raid, uh, 100 missiles and most uh, launched against uh, Ukrainian cities, against Ukrainian, against the, the, the electricity grid, and etc. So, uh, yes, the main factor is the war in Ukraine and the way Russia is behaving. And uh, in addition, uh, there is a risk in the western part of Ukraine, especially, and we see that now. Uh, very clearly. Indeed, and you talked about one of the potential um, ways of making the situation safer for those countries on NATO's eastern flank is some kind of coordination with Russia, um, perhaps similar to what happened during the Cold War. I mean, tell us about that. Is there coordination already between NATO and Moscow on military issues like this, or would something like that be entirely novel? Well, perhaps coordination is too strong as, I would say, a dialogue to, to make sure that there is a link uh, between, at least at the military level, make sure that uh, we, we speak the same language uh, because the risk is high. We know that and it's higher since the beginning of Ukrainian war. Now we have a demonstration, even if it is an unfortunate incident, but uh, it can happen every day. So uh, it will be wise to uh, reactivate those kind of links that we used to have. In, in fact, uh, uh, until 2014, there was a, a Russia, NATO Russia committee, NATO Russia uh, were able to discuss those more, those more uh, dangerous, risky uh, issues. Why not today? Obviously, it's difficult because Russia has launched this war against Ukraine, but at least to avoid that it escalates uh, dramatically.